Hi folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today we are following up on our under the sea video from last week and we're making scallop shells this week. I have three different colors of blue. I have a light blue, I have a medium blue, and a dark blue and I'll give more names on those later when we're using them. And I'm also going to be using a little bit of gray. All of these papers are 1 8 inch wide, so pretty standard size. You can use whatever quilling tool you like, either a needle tool or a slotted tool. You may need some tweezers, small scissors, and for glue, I'm just going to be using Elmer's Glue All in my needle nose bottle, but you feel free to use the glue of your choice. You will need a ruler because we're going to be doing some measuring if you don't want to eyeball it. And then you're going to need a surface to build your quilling on. We're going to be using pins and our cork board covered in parchment paper. So we're starting off with our lightest color of blue. This is Quilled Creations Light Blue. And I am going to be measuring 8 inches. All of the, well, 99% of the shapes for this scallop shell are going to be the same. It's going to be a really, really smushed teardrop. So we're rolling our paper from end to end. Again, if you don't want to use a needle tool, you're welcome to use a slotted tool for this project. It will work out fine either way. I'm going to let it open up a bit in our fingers. Try to make it as even as you can and then glue down the end. And this is very much like a standard teardrop shape where you pinch one side but instead of just doing a little pinch, where you're pinching the heck out of it. But you want to make sure that you're only making one side into a point. So I'm going to hold it gently and try to hold the eye towards the center so it stays kind of even. And then I pinched probably 75% of this and I really, really pinched it, but I'm making sure that I do not squeeze the other side because I do want that side to still have a curve to it. So that is the shape we're looking for, and that's going to be the center part of our scallop shell. And then we're making a bunch more of those shapes, but in different sizes. I have two more of the light blue, but those are six inches. I have two that are the color turquoise from Craft Harbor Paper. Those are also six inches. I have two that are back to Quilt Creations in a color called Royal Blue. I think that's such a pretty color. And then I have two more of that same royal blue, but those are four inches. So again, that center one is eight inches. We have three on either side that are six inches. And then we have two on the bottom that are four inches. We're going to need something to fill in that little gap that I just showed. And all that is going to be a two inch tight coil. I'm using the lightest color again. Back to that light blue from Quilled Creations. So I just roll it all the way up and then I'm just going to glue down the end and that's going to fill in the little space. I know that is not anatomically correct for this scallop shell, but I found after playing around with it, I just like the way it looked. I thought it filled in the space nicely without having to manipulate my teardrops a whole bunch. So get that all burnished and finished and then we're going to add a little bit of detail to our teardrops. And all that means is that we're going to be using that gray paper I showed earlier. It's a color called Silver Gray from Craft Harbor. And we're just going to be wrapping each of our pieces in that paper. It's going to add to the dimensionality of the little seashell and just kind of makes it pop a little bit more. So to do that, all you have to do is just Apply a thin line of glue down one side of your teardrop. And I found that giving it a little bit of a rub really made it stay. So that's what you should be looking at in the beginning. And then a tiny line of glue down the other side. And then just pull the strip around. And I also found in addition to giving a little bit more uh, like I said, dimensionality to the seashell. It also kept those nice sharp teardrops in line. After I wrapped it a second time, I didn't glue that time. I just tear off any extra. If you have a little bit there, that's where your scissors can come in handy. 
So after I glue down my end there, I'm going to give it a little snip on the end with my scissors. That way I avoid any extra bulk on the bottom. Snip. There you go. Nice and even. And you're going to do that to all of your pieces, all of those teardrops and also that little round piece in the center. You just do that the same way. Just apply a little bit of glue and wrap it around a couple of times and then tear off any extras. And there you have it. See, I really think this nice gray pops against that blue. I think it looks really cool. Totally optional. You don't have to do that, but that is what I decided to do. So let's put this together. It's going to go very quickly. This is a very quick little project. I'm starting off with all of my light blue pieces. So I have the long teardrop in the center. I know it is not drastically bigger than the other two. It's just to make that center a little bit larger. That's going to make it again, look like it has a 3d quality to it. Cause if you picture a scallop shell, they're not flat. They have a bit of a roundness to them. So I added some glue to the bottom of my largest teardrop and I am pinning both that and my little round piece in place just to keep them stable on my cork board. Everything is nice and flat. And then I'm going to glue and pin both of my six inch light blue teardrops on either side. I'm going to get my hands in the way for a minute here, but I'll try to make it go as smoothly as possible. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down one side of my teardrop and just get it right flush against the other side of the one in the middle. And then we're going to do the same thing. Grab some tweezers because this is starting to stick to my fingers a little bit. I usually have a off camera. I have a damp paper towel. If you find your fingers are getting gluey and sticky, that's just a really great thing to have on hand or a little damp sponge while you are quilling. Uh, it really helps get the glue off your fingers. You can just rub them on there real quick. And it really takes off the white glue, especially very, very easily. So just a little tip. I usually have it off camera. Sometimes I show it, but not often. I also like to use a couple of pins in these pieces because I really want them to be flush against that center piece. You can hold them in your hand to do this. You don't have to use the cork board if you don't want to, but for the sake of time and having everything on camera, you can go ahead and use pins. You can also use tacky glue if you want this process to go even faster. Sometimes I just like to show the least amount of tools necessary so nobody feels like they need to go out and buy a million things to do this craft. Okay, so now we have the all the light blue pieces together. Now we're gonna add on the rest of our teardrops and that's gonna be it. This project, like I said, really, really fast today. We have our medium blue, the turquoise color, which is really, really pretty in person. It's like a cerulean blue. If you like that color, that's a good one to pick up. And back to the other side with the same color. I don't know what it is about this right hand of the seashell. It really does not want. There we go. Tweezers are our friend. All right, so next we're gonna do our, our darkest color, sorry, our royal blue from Quilled Creations. And these ones are gonna kind of go more straight out, a little bit of an angle there, but we're getting to the bottom of our shell. And then glue on that one. Just that one side today really doesn't want to cooperate with me. There we go. And you can fiddle around with these as you're putting them on because we're using just a white glue that dries quickly, but not instantaneously. You do have a little bit of wiggle room. So if you don't like the way that they're lining up, you can move them around. So I'm adding on my last little 
teardrops here, just those tiny four inch teardrops, and I'm putting some glue on the end just to make sure that they oop, definitely stick to our little centerpiece. And I kind of like those angled down, oop, angled down a little bit. There you go, just get it the way you like it, and that's about it. Really, really fast seashells. Oops. I also have a tiny bit bigger one, so you can play with the proportions on these as long as you have that center teardrop larger than the rest of them. There's a bigger one. As long as you have that center teardrop larger than the rest of them and then the smallest teardrop on the bottom, then it will give you the shape you're looking for. You can play around with colors. You can make these three different colors like I did. Obviously you can make them one color. You can do whatever you want. That is just the idea of adding a little bit more color. Throw them with the starfish that I made last week and you got yourself some nice additions to your little seascape. Um, I know people have been asking for fish. There's a lot of fish tutorials out there. I'm trying to come up with something new. Uh, I haven't really come up with a design I really like as of yet. So hopefully one day that will happen. But for now, we have shells and we have uh, starfish. So I hope that helps kind of that summer vibe a little bit. As always, don't forget to leave any questions you have in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I will leave all the links to the tools, supplies, and quilling paper that I used in the description box. There'll also be a link for my Buy Me A Coffee page there where you can check out my extras and support me a little bit more if you choose to. That's always greatly appreciated. But in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll be around for my next video and I'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.